Good morning, intrepid puppeteers and puppet supporters. Welcome. Uh, here we are for our second panel of our festival, the Sunday morning of our first weekend. Uh, there has been so much activity, a little bit of head spinning, um, of course. Uh, so very excited to convene and take a moment to uh, uh, have a, a time for the artists who have been performing the past couple of days to talk a little bit about their work and the materiality of it. Um, so I'm Blair, festival director, and uh, with my colleague Paula Richards, we uh, devised this idea of this uh, um, symposium in different capacities. And just to point us out, we also have book talks by uh, f f four different uh, authors. Well, actually, there's yes, there are four different authors who have published books um, this past year by Rutledge on puppetry. And uh, our next one will be featuring Paulette. And that will happen on Tuesday afternoon. Is that 4.30? 5? 4, 4.30. <laughs> <30. coughs> Check your program. <laughs> Tuesday afternoon here in this room. And uh, so uh, uh, Dacia Posner uh, is here and going to moderate today's, uh, this morning's program. And uh, uh, Dacia is a, a puppeteer and a scholar from Northwestern and has uh, helped out over the years with all this stuff and very, very honored to be able to have her here as well. So I'll turn the, the morning over to you, Dacia. Take care. Fabulous. Welcome all and thank you for coming. Um, I'm so pleased to be here with all these amazing artists having seen all your shows yesterday. Um, and special thanks to Paulette and Blair for organizing and celebrating and generating these conversations. Um, today, as Blair mentioned, we're focusing on the materials of which uh, puppets are made and how we listen to materials and interact with materials. Um, and uh, let me tell you a little bit about the structure. Uh, each of the artists is going to talk a little bit about their work, sometimes by showing images, sometimes by explaining their philosophy, sometimes by showing puppets. Um, and uh, I'm going to give each of them 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so to say whatever they want to say about their work. Then I'll ask some questions, and then we'll turn it over to you because I'm sure that you all are going to have lots of questions and curiosities as well, especially if you saw their work yesterday or earlier in the weekend. Um, the three uh, companies today um, are, uh, there's Maria Tri Solistiani, who's the co-artistic -artis director of Paper Moon Puppet Theater in Indonesia. There's Jacqueline Serafin and Iker Vincente, uh, the co-founders of the Mexican theater company La Liga Teatro Elastico. And there is uh, Iranian-American multimedia graphic artist, filmmaker, and puppeteer Hamid Ramanian. Um, so those are the folks that we're going to be talking with today. Um, and I'll leap right into our first, our first artist. OK. Can I borrow a microphone? Oh, uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah? No, no. Yeah. OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. So. Uh, Paper Moon Puppet Theater was founded in uh, tw uh, 2006 in Yogyakarta, Indonesia by co-artistic director Ria Tri Sulistiani, who's an illustrator and a children's book writer and a former theater performer. Sulistiani has since nurtured and developed and expanded the company with co-artistic director Iwan Effendi, who wasn't able to be here today because of a, a sick child puppeteer. <laughs> um, uh, he's a visual artist and Paper Moon's puppet designer, and uh, we're very lucky to have Ria here today. Together with a company of collaborators, Sulistiani and Effendi have experimented with many kinds of puppetry. They're committed to extending <coughs> what puppetry can mean with their mixed media productions and to creating works that imaginatively explore identity and society. Paper Moon also presents its artworks through visual art installations and shares knowledge through collaborations and workshops for all ages. In 2008, they initiated an international Biennale festival called Pesta Boneca, meaning a puppet festival and or feast and or party. Paper Moon has presented its productions in Indonesia as well as in more than 20 countries in ov over the past 18 years, with the Chicago International Puppet Theater Festival as their most recent stop. Many of you will have seen their brilliantly poetic 
production this weekend, A Bucket of Beetles. Rhea, welcome. Thank you. So I prefer to stand up because I'm small. So, and also for me to, e to be easier to watch this. So today I would love to present you the process of A Bucket of Beetles. This process is pretty special for us. This performance is quite different with our other's performances process because it came from our, um, at that time, he was four years old boy imagination. So um, shall we start with this one? Can we make it into bigger slides maybe? I'm running it as well. Okay. So um, in the beginning of it, um, it, well, actually the idea came from Luna. He's actually my son and he was four at that time. And he got obsessed with insects so much. <laughs> and since inside my belly, he got in used to work with the other members of Paper Moon Puppeteer who's <laughs> there. And we travel a lot, we, you know, like he watch, he understand all the process of making performances. So one day he asked me, when he was four, can I do a performance with Paper Moon as well? And I asked, what is your proposal? And he started to, to talk about, oh, I would love to make a performance about Rani Sarah's Beetle that tried to find a new home. So just like, hmm, interesting, let's go deeper about it. So these pictures are actually what happened every day. This is our daily life that he keep drawing insects in many different, I don't know what's like Latin names, whatever, and he keep doing it. And then we, we visited some exhibitions about insects exhibition. What I found also very interesting, in Indonesia, we are not seeing insects as, a, as an important thing, you know, because Maybe abroad, it becomes exotic because it's, you know, it's an animal from other part of the world. But in Indonesia, because it's so much, so many in Indonesia, we even felt that it's, it's a pest for us. Um, people get, you know, get rid of it. We just pesticide our plants, whatever. So it's very rare for us to understand about insects. And when a little boy are having this idea about these teeny tiny creatures that people keep kills in, in the farms, and it becomes, it becomes, an, an, you know, for me, it becomes an environmental calling. So every night, actually, me and my son, we keep making storytelling, like a duet, and I record it to my phone. So it's just like, you know, like it's, it's very, it's improvisation of storytelling that I came up with this, and he came up with these characters, and we keep building that, uh, you know, stories. Uh, next. And when we did that process as our, you know, parenthood situation, one day we got invitation from Yokohama um, in Japan that they would love to have us perform, but only four, perform four people can come. And at that time, we didn't have performances with only four people, usually seven, usually six. So we don't have any performance with four. And what we found very interesting in Japan, rhinoceros beetle become a very, very expensive pet. And then, uh, in one of the exhibitions that we visited, we found that there is a person in Jogja, in where we live, his job is actually exported insects. So I sent Benny, can you raise your hand, Ben? There you are. I, I sent Benny, Benny, go to this person's place and then get you know, more information about this business. And then it became very interesting because we found like how, wait, how, uh, how they catch the insects in the forest what makes them, you know, what kind of nature sign that told them that it's a danger. So if you manage to come to a bucket of beetles, there is one scene uh, where there's two um, uh, uh, insect collectors, we call it, like this local person that collects insects. And once they saw this big giant moth, and they found that it's, it's a danger for, it, for them. It's a sign from the nature. They have to escape. Because that what happened to these people. Because when they when they try to to catch the insects with a, a piece of cloth with lights, so all the insects came to that cloth, and then when they catch it, they saw this big giant moth, and then suddenly they watch, they saw red eyes, and those those are the tigers. Mm -hmm. So that's what we find very interesting through the journey of our research, not just only from a perspective of a little boy, but also how insects are actually live in the cycles in Indonesia. That's what we found very interesting. So those journey ended up with a very simple performance, only three person on stage. And Iwan, my husband, the co-artistic director, he became the music uh, director and music operator. So it was only me, Benny, and Lunang, my son, performing on stage at that time. So the sets are very simple. It's just a piece of paper, so like big paper, and then 
we already combined like shadows and also Wehea was already there. So Wehea, the characters of the performances, since um, the beginning is already there. Uh, next. And then um, the pandemic happened. When the pandemic happened, we changed the version of a bucket of Beatles into a cinematic version. So in this moment, we also explore further about the materiality of the puppets itself. So at that time, because we, um, me and the team were saying, okay, we cannot buy any materials. We don't have money. There's no tour. There's no performances happen. <laughs> Next. So we decided, as you see, this is our studio. We are, we are surrounded by little forests, I can say. So we have plenty of materials around us, which is twigs and branches. And then we decided, and then at that time, uh, we decided, okay, maybe we can start the idea of making the puppets through Lunang's drawings to these insects that he drew. And then Anton, can you raise your hand, Anton? Our, <laughs> our technical engineer and the head of puppet making in our studio, the puppet designer, he got frustrated with the drawings that Lunang's made because it's very hard to follow those lines. <laughs> And then he decided, okay, maybe we have to make it more natural. So he decided just to pick some twigs and branches that fall down or like dry. And then he started to ensemble those twigs to make a puppets. Next. So what we found very interesting through those drawings and then through these drawings, and we, we kind of like um, interpret it into three-dimensional rather than to paint them we decided to use threads because we saw that's how he put the colors in the crayons. Mm -hmm. So it's like messy crayons, so ma messy threads on the drawings. And because it is uh, a cinematic, so everything can go very small and very detailed. And then of course, because of that also, because of our situation that we decided not to buy anything, next. And these are yeah the shadow puppets then. So we end all the natural materials as the sets and also the materials of our puppets. Every single thing, like all the rhinoceros, beetles, everything. So you can see that this is really like the day of our um, shooting. We just go out like, okay, what kind of twigs we can take and just take and put it. So what is storyboard? We don't have storyboard. Just like kick it <laughs> off, kick it off. <laughs> just do it and try. So this is what we are making. So natural materials, child's drawing, and no restri restriction for custom and declare in the airport <laughs> makes a big freedom for us to create the puppets and the performance cinematically at that time. This piece then travel a lot to many international festivals around the globe online. And then next, those festivals ask us to make the live version of it. And we decided, okay, let's start with Indonesia, with our own country first. So we still use our, um, our puppets that are actually built using those crazy materials. Of course, it will be including, you know, like termites or whatever <laughs> inside it. <laughs> because as you see, it's, it's definitely, it's everything's are, I mean, all the puppets were actually really made out of branch and uh, twigs. So we made this performance, we made a video of it because it's a very different version with the cinematic one. It's a very different language, it's a very different medium. So we decided to make a new piece, next. And then, um, and then the sets, because we are already start to think about the traveling, we cannot bring those trees from those wooden houses in the film to be built on stage. So we decided to change everything with um, uh, fabrics, so for, for the screens and also for the trees, we start to make with the fabrics and it's all foldable because we are started to think about touring. Next. And then we travel to um, two cities, well, Jogja and Jakarta in Indonesia, we perform in two cities. Of course, there is no problems with the custom and declare. So we still kick it off, still doing what we are, we still keep the materials as it is uh, with our branches and twigs and then next we got invited with international festivals like Sydney and now Chicago. Before we come to Chicago, we, we flew to Sydney, we performed there, and for your information, Australia had the most craziest custom declare situation for plants <laughs> and twigs. Oh, the craziest, cannot, cannot, cannot. Especially if you go by plane, it's impossible. It's impossible to pass it. 
So, okay, let's think about it. And then we decided to change. And in the beginning, they said, okay, maybe you can send it over shipping so we can do fumigation and everything on the flight. No, <laughs> I don't want to take a risk. So today we bring, um, and then we decided, Anton with Hak. Actually, Hak, can you raise your hand? There you are. It's another puppet designer for, uh, from us. So we decided to make, can you stand up, Pambo? So this is Pambo, the puppeteer of the rhinoceros beetle. And we decided to change everything. So we get rid of all of this crazy situation of the twigs and branches. So we made it out of uh, aluminum. And then we do paper mache on it. And we colored it with washi paper. It's a Japanese um, handmade paper to make the color still natural as well. Because we found that with, with paints, it will be it's, it, it's a different journey. So we decided to do that in that way. Um, we do have another one, right? Um, we do have two. So um, next, slides, please. So these are the process of it. Uh, yeah, this is how, so this is the grasshopper, um, and that's yoga. So that's, <laughs> that's the, the pirate grasshopper. So this character, again, came from um, Lunang's story that after he got attacked by the mantis and the red ants, he got fixed by a, a spider doctor, and it ended up with become a pirate grasshopper. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. So it's, again, all the materials made out of those uh, aluminum, and it's something that we never did before, because we usually do rattan um, for, our, for our puppets especially. So these are the sketches. As you saw, these are the, this is the original drawing of our puppet designer. Uh, the, now he is eight, so this is an eight years old boy. And then all the uncles <laughs> kind of, they make an, yeah, um, interpret the drawings into these uh, technical drawings. Next, because there is some mechanism inside it. Um, Pambo, if you, so there is some mechanism inside the puppet. So for example, the rhinoceros beetle can fly and it can uh, wiggle the, the the legs and also the wing. So s there's some mechanical mechanism inside for that. And the other thing that when we design our puppets and our sets from the beginning, we are always thinking about touring. We are always thinking about putting them inside suitcases. So all of these puppets are could be dismantled and then all can fit inside the suitcase. So this is our custom and declare situation. Mm -hmm. So this is our, I can say what, we can each, each, um, each suitcase is, they have this kind of material. So uh, what's inside each suitcase. So that also makes us easier to repack and pack and repack. So yeah, um, even the trees, we usually, uh, maybe we have to ask uh, the local host to collect branches for us. But then we found like, no, just make everything. So everything made out of aluminum, basically, and covered. Next. Um, so yeah, so that's, that, that's what coming from us um, to open the discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so interesting. You know, and you get a sense of the you can see from the the design you can see from the the way that you in, interact with the materials that there that there's a history that you can sort of suspect mm -hmm. but to hear you talk about it is really <laughs> lovely <Thank laughs> yeah yeah so okay i'm going to go on to the next yep. uh to the next artists um uh Jacqueline Serafan and Iker Vicente are the founders of Mexican theater company La Liga Teatro Elástico, which creates work based on objects and animated figures. Serafin is an actress and stage director, and Vicente is an artist and puppet designer. Beginning with an interdisciplinary sensibility, La Liga develops projects that exist somewhere between sculpture, theater, performance, and teaching. Their events meld object performance and children's theater and participatory street theater with games and celebration as a strategy for new foundations and meanings inside the museums and theaters and urban spaces where their events take place. 
They have participated in international festivals in the Americas, Africa, and Europe with their plays, installations, and workshops, making frequent collaborations and co-productions with other artists and companies. In 2019, they received the prestigious award for excellence in stage design at the Prague Quadrennial of Performance Design and Space. Here at the festival, they presented The Beast Dance, or The Secret Spell of the Wild, which merged spectacle and community interaction to revive the ancient dance of the hunter and the prey. Jacqueline and Iker, we're so happy to have you here today. Yeah, thanks Thank for coming. You. Thank you. <laughs> Well, we, ah, uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, we, <laughs> now we wake up. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> we have some, some image that we, uh, but it's not so organized that like, like Ria. So we, <laughs> we only, you can see it while we, we talk a little bit. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we were thinking material is a great uh, idea for us. It's, it's very, very important. So we, we, we try to put all our ideas and the ideas that we have uh, find in, in many, found in very many thinkers and in the experience to, to, to try to, to open the discussion. No? So, so for us, uh, 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 yes, material is, is like a form of life. It's, 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 it's a living being all the material then uh, and so we have to we, uh, what's life is something that is intention something that has that's that is like in in uh, in something intention i i, I say to, uh, to have tension to have uh, it, you need at least two points mm -hmm. you know so there's something that is is in 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 the middle that is like and you, you can make music with that, not toying. So <laughs> it's like <laughs> elastic, that's uh, also. So uh, between this, uh, maybe the first relation that we, uh, uh, classic relation for a visual artist is material and form. What do you, what, what do material, what's, what the material, like what, what is the form that you, you want to make? And usually, usually, um, well, there's, there's an opportunity for dialogue. Because if you, if you want to, you can use material like, like a slave. You can say, you will do this. <laughs> and then you have to find a slave, a very good slave, uh, 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 or, uh, or uh, someone that produces slaves to, to you that ma only make the thing that your great idea that you have in your head. And, but that, that's not the way that we like to, we like to dialogue with, with the with things that, that we have in front because they told many uh, beautiful things, more than the, the things that, usually our things in the head are like flat, are very common things. So we, we like to dialogue with material and that, that has given, uh, lead us to this, this journey. And I don't know, and, and the other... Um, so you yeah, propose, yeah. he proposed like different dialogues, uh, for example, material form, material space, material time, material memory. Um, just to, we, we talk about that just to kind of make an um, analysis, but we realize that everything is uh, together. So we, we are, I, I, I'm going to, to read something about this idea of uh, material and life, uh, because my English is not so well. So it's faster like that. So it is not surprised that the things, objects, and materials have a memory, um, a certain mnemonic charge. Today, there are uh, several studies in ethnology that others and, and other science that discuss, are discussing this, no? An example is the ethnologist Thierry Bonnot in this text of bio, uh, biography of the object, where the process, uh, he proposes a methodology to study the object in its becoming. I, I, I hope it is clear that. Uh, this work of observing the path of things allows, to, allows us to observe the, their agentivity, 
uh, and uh, multiple changes of status, uh, status, putting in some way in doubt, doubt mm. the ordinary categories with which we classify them. Usually we classify them in Western, yes? So it is very interesting to me and to us all this um, theoretical discussion because we, we come from Mexico. And in Mexico, uh, in our country, our country have a, a particular relationship with things. In, uh, first of all, the conception of the world of the indigenous people does not distinguish the categories as they are known in West. Uh, I mean, a wolf is not above the trees. A tree, a tree is not um, less than a man. So the living things, the, the includes other things like stones or rivers or it doesn't matter what. And I firmly believe that this conception of the world influences a lot all Mexican culture. Because as you know, Mexican culture is a mixture of different things. But I think this conception of the world for, came from indigenous people. In uh, it's very very hard for us. For example, relationship about about food, about um, yes, uh, um, especially for example for with the corn. We 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 made we we know phrases like we are born. We are um, child uh, of the of the corn, things like that. That not not always I metaphor are metaphors. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of weird, I know. But um, another relationship, for example, with the uh, old handcrafts like uh, I don't know pot pot pottery, weaving, embroidery, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And those are multiple manual labor techniques. Um, are very, um, how do you say, embodied in the people. So I think all of this knowledge is intrinsic, intrinsically linked to the materials and objects that in our country have a deep identity charge. So we work with these materials and all uh, the things uh, they do, they and the other constructors, uh, it came from people that they met and, for example, um, los, los, lo de los papalotes. Abby Mael, yes. Could you explain that, the papalotes and the las personas que tejen? Yes, maybe, uh, because we, we, uh, uh, you can see the, the wolves down there, they are made, and the deer, they are made from bamboo. Bamboo is, is, a, is, a, is a crazy and beautiful material. And we learn about that from a, from an, from a craftsman that make kites. Yeah, there in, uh, he used to make cane with cane, but he discovered bamboo. He got crazy. It's, it's strong. <laughs> so he, he, we, we get in, in, in some place, and he, he began to, no, you have to try bamboo. Ah, yeah. I, so you have to buy a, a big knife, and, and that's it. And, I will, and you have to bend it with, with, with heat and with oil, and that's it. Okay, I, I, we, we, we try, try, try Beto and I, we are the principal constructors. Uh, first, Beto, like, he was, he loves so much wood and he loves also other, all, other material that are more, uh, that in, in his tradition uh, are more, more close to him. So at, at first he said, ah, what's that? <laughs> Horrible. Let's do in aluminum. <laughs> But we have an, an experience, uh, 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 another experience with aluminum. We, we made like four or, or, or five or six big animals in aluminum for, because it was for a, for, for a park. For in Escaret Park. For Escaret in Cancun, you know? That's tropical, tropical. So everything goes, you, you make something with, with wire, and wire goes, yeah. no? It's not possible. Yeah. So they say, no, aluminum. OK, aluminum. So I, I bought a big, because there was money, so I could <laughs> bring, bought, uh, I bought a big machine for, ben, for solding uh, aluminum. Was, 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 we made, we, we made a, a team for, for that. So, and, and it uh, le, uh, 
we can draw in space with aluminum. Like I, I, I like that, uh, like you, I think, to draw in space, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, that was great. But, you know, something was so cold and yeah. so nasty and some, pff, <laughs> that's, I, I, I never got the, to, to know to, 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 to solve. My, my friend, yes, there, there we have a, a good uh, um, sol solder, no, solder, no. How do you say it? Welder, welder, do to weld. Yes, a uh, great welder. So the three of us work very well. But there's something that remains that I don't like. So when we began to, to explore bamboo, this, uh, that's, that's, that's the thing, because this is a mixture between wire, like Calder tradition, that, that's, what, that's my big father, and, <laughs> and, and wood. So it's wood that bends. But you have to stay, you have to, uh, you have to say like, um, um. <laughs> it's not, it's not so easy. The, 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 and, but, but, yeah. yeah. Uh, but this is not, this is not bamboo. No. Wow. This is not bamboo. This is, this is another branch from Africa, from, uh, he, he is, uh, Oh, it's from Africa, the branch? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah, because uh, we were working Rattan. there with with Rattan. with Motus Theater Motus. Yes, it's like, but it's not Rattan. It's, it's another. Rattan. It's like ah. a cousin of Rattan. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plenty of types, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's something like that. That is much easy. Mm. Yeah, you yeah, make these. Like and it's a bone, or it's not all wood. Yes. What is the the? Ah, uh, that's yes. another bone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a skin and a bone. Yeah. Or, or so you you. Wow. For us, the constru the, to construct a, a puppet is like an ensemblage, uh, is to ensemble different things, no? To, to make uh, dialogue between uh, different, different, to, to make dialogue different materials between them. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, so there's the cane, there's the leather, there's the, that's the leather, leather uh, mm -hmm. from a coat. Mm. I, I, I clean it. Like it's very nasty, but it's very nasty. <laughs> from your coat? No, there, there's a, there's a, it's through the pandemic, we were living in the country. Oh, so I there, see. there's a farm there with, uh, with goats, with, uh, and goats, 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 oh, goats. goats. And they throw the skin. Coat. I no. you got your leather for coats. <laughs> <and stuff>. <laughs> <laughs> goats. Wow. They, they, thro they throw the skin, so that right, right. works. Ah. It works for the yeah. ah. um, video. So they give Iker the, the skin and you learn how to clean. And yeah. mm. Another time, another, another friend, another friend give us uh, the, the, the clue the clee for, for, now, uh, for knowing how to work with it. Mm. Because, but it's not so complicated. Uh, you, you, you know, there's craft, the, is the, the craft uh, thing. We, we get very afraid of it, but it's not so complicated. You, ho you have to go inside and try it. Mm. When, when, when I was uh, in the school, I was very, very punk, and I, I, I work with, with things like with trash. Waste this, no? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and put them together. I didn't make well to put it together. Then I, they, I discovered silicone, and I put all the things together with, <laughs> without problem. <laughs> but then I, I, I became tired about uh, junk. You, you, I, I don't want to live around with junk all the time. I prefer be, be, beautiful things, and Jacqueline also. So she, uh, maybe it could be interesting to, to talk about the, the... Yes, I, I, but, well, the, um, the way of the material linkers in this company is very interesting because everything came from... from oh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Because every, everyone came from a, a, a tradition. Humberto Galicia, for example, his father was a wood, wood uh, ¿cómo se dice? Carpintero? Carpenter. A carpenter. So he learned uh, when he was a child how to work with wood. And for example, my father, it was a um, um, talabartero. Or a, um, they work with leather. Okay. Uh, we made shoes and many things. Uh, but this kind of leather that we, uh, we designed with. Um, with some, some, <laughs> se llama, en español se llama, Carbin. 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 it's not to Chisel. cut, Chisel. but to draw, Chisel. se, right. se yeah. llama cincel, cincelar, so many, uh, um, everyone in this company ha has a relation, um, for example, Iker's, Iker's father always ha has an, a work, uh, um, workplace, 
to construct something. So, so it's um, this practice uh, came from our our childhood, you know. So and what, what also uh, Monse, no? uh, in Monse also, uh, which is uh, the, the person who uh, who comes to the tejido. Who made the, the crochet? Mm -hmm. she, mm -hmm. she came to with w w to the workshop because she was making her social I don't know what from from a museum. So she was there social to working. social work I think, and then she she came and she was very she don't like to work work with wood and uh, but say she she said i know how to uh, to uh, to make crochet and so she began and wow we say we have to put it into the into the puppets and that all our puppets now have crochet yeah so uh, for, for us it's inter interesting um to think in in our puppets as a collectivity work yeah. Because mm -hmm. even if Iker is, a, is a, a, a puppet designer or a lead of the company in this way of, uh, of in, in the um, art plastic way, uh, many people has made his his own yeah. creativity here. Yeah. So it's it's a collective work. Yeah. yeah. If you think also that that ah yeah that this is um, yes. okay ah perfect so. You, uh, we can, we can. <laughs> <laughs> is, is the, uh, no, is the finish the thought, finish the thought. Or is just the glass no, for reflection? I already finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only to that say that... so fascinating, I like to... <laughs> only to say... Here, here, here. I mean, there are two, actually, there should be 30 minutes. <laughs> 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 only to say that is, that, is collective, that is collected in the sense, in a more general sense for us. It's not only the humans that they were working there. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of, of, of beings. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, there are the, the, the plants, the animals, the goat. Now it's a, it's a donkey. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, <laughs> yeah, for us it's like that. For us it's that, that clear like that. There's a, the energy of the bamboo is, is very important. The, the energy of the animals yeah. and this as a cactus, very important. And so, they are in other status of living also because yeah. the, I, I, you know, the, the sheep dies, but that it, uh, continues her process of of life, <laughs> of living, yeah. <laughs> As you know. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's a to be continued conversation. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I have lots of questions. Because now we're all so <laughs> eager. We have to, you know, hear from the third, and then you're going to be more excited. All yeah, right. There are much more interesting than my talk, but I'm glad I'm come sitting on. this no, no, side. No, 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 no. <laughs> come on, come on. All right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ramanian undertook the immense task of illustrating, if you haven't seen it in the, uh, the, you know, the, uh, on the tables that where this material is all being shown, and um, the immense task of illustrating and commissioning a new translation and adaptation by Ahmad Sadri of the 10th century Persian epic poem, Sanname, by, uh, but, uh, by Frawalsi into, uh, that he calls the Saname the Epic of the Persian Kings. It was published in 2013. This best-selling art book, which the Wall Street Journal calls a masterpiece, is in its second edition. In 2018, he released an award-winning pop-up book in English and French called Zahak, the Legend of the Serpent King. In 2014, he shifted his focus to theater, working with shadow puppets and digital media. And today, to date, he has created five theater pieces, including the Unima USA award-winning Feathers of Fire, which toured to 23 cities around the world, including to an earlier iteration of this festival. 
And in 2019, he was commissioned by Yo-Yo Ma's Silk Road Ensemble to create a video animation for their new multimedia project, Heroes Take Their Stand. Many of you will have seen his latest stage production here at the festival, Song of the North, which features a cast of 500 handmade puppets and an extraordinary ensemble of nine actors and puppeteers who I would say are an orchestra of movement and light. Hamid, thank you so much for talking with us today. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> it's only 483 puppets, by the way. Some maybe got lost in that U-Haul truck. <laughs> no, we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you. I wish my presentation would be fun as you are, but uh, w what we are dealing with, with the reflection of the actually the puppets we are not dealing with the actual puppets mm -hmm. so whatever we built and we try to create uh, we have in mind that how it's going to look like when you uh, when you project it into the wall or how you when you cast the shadow how it's going to look like uh, my uh, original inspiration for starting doing these things um, this shadow theater it was uh, Lottie Reiniger uh, the Adventure of Prince uh, Ahmed, uh, which is uh, from another Persian story. Um, so that was my source inspiration, and based on that, I started making puppets with uh, just cardboard, things like that. And then I got introduced to work, uh, work of Larry Reed, and I learned some mask techniques. And then before that, because I was doing graphic design and movie making and things like that, so I combined all these techniques together and start creating a very uh, elaborated, uh, we don't have any, I have, I sent lots of puppets, pictures. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so start making uh, puppets, but again, the puppets usually combine with a lot of feathers and fairs and the laces and the things like that that sits on uh, two different material I used uh, throughout last seven years of making these kind of shows. Uh, one of them was a, a, a kind of cardboard I found that has a plastic material combined into it, mm. which is very interesting. It doesn't tear, mm -hmm. but it has a good quality. But overall, that was the, f uh, we had like around 150 puppets in Song of, uh, in Feathers of Fire. And after a while, I realized that these are a little bit start bending because we travel a lot. And unlike your, that you see, put in the suitcase, ours, we have a five pallets, half of this room. <laughs> so we have to think, oh my God. <clears throat> yeah, we have around uh, 800 kilograms of material, basically, wow. when we send things around. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> that's, you <laughs> can wow. calculate. So uh, some of them we can just show, uh, and then I, I have a series of the backstage uh, look at how it looks like, and then I have a series of the... Um, the puppets. So the puppets, um, again, and then I, I discover another kind of cardboard, very like 400 um, gram uh, or pound, they call it here. I think we, we call it 400 gram. Yes, I come from the metric system <laughs> culture. Anyway, so and then uh, what we do, we once we design first, and then when we cut it out, some of them by hand, some of them by laser cuts, some of them by blade cuts. And then we cut twice. So once you cut first, and then you uh, use the very high quality, the uh, photography color gel, which is a reflect very well. And those are, we put in the middle of it, and then we make another cut of the same design and then sandwich them together. Mm -hmm. So, and then from here it goes to the, um, I don't do that, the person goes to do the mechanics of the puppet. You know, these are the simple ones, actually. But, uh, yeah, these are like... So this color that you see that reflect, uh, it's are all the color gels. So it's... Mm -hmm. it's I, we calculated each puppet approximately takes like around 16 hours to 17 hours to be built. It depends on the size. Some of them are huge. Some of them are like this one, small. But also, you know, we can talk about the design idea behind it, mm -hmm. but that's uh, maybe it takes much longer. We can talk about it. But material-wise, again, 
I, uh, it's, it's something that has to reflect uh, on the shadow. If we keep going and not looking at my face, <laughs> this is my ensemble. This is the mask that we were building. These are the, uh, we use many different materials and finally we found this one. Uh, it's called Siren. It's a kind of polymer, polymer that actually doesn't break. Because again, in Feathers of Fire, if you keep, keep, let's keep going. There's a lot of pictures. So, like, uh, yeah, oh, like the cheese, but, and also because uh, we have also combination of the human actors and the puppets, like mm -hmm. some of the scenes that are puppet that is exactly became next scene, the human. So this is very important than the, how the lace and the fear and the, all the uh, nuances on the body work. So it's not just completely black. Uh, ke let's keep going, let's keep going. This, yeah, let's, no, these are the reflection. This is the audience point of view. The one you see two before, that was the, from uh, backstage. Our screen is very large. Let's keep going down. Yes, yeah, see, the our <laughs> screen is the 35 feet, which is translate to, I think, 12 meters mm. or 13 meters to eight meters mm -hmm. tall, wow. which is 30, uh, which is 16 feet. So, uh, th and then also, we have a special kind of lens which is, has only one camera um, projectors in the world that has <laughs> attributes that we can actually get very close to the lens and create still sharp image. Mm -hmm. So based on that, when we are actually designing the puppet, we have to think about how big we have to make this puppet to make sure that it appears correctly and is not out of focus. Mm -hmm. That also the measurement is very important because of the accordance to the kind of like physics of light. You have to, these are some of the stuff we have to really literally calculate those, okay? This is with the, with the calculator, okay? This is the size you want, this is the small size you want. And uh, it depends. So, and also sometimes you, you, uh, you, you wanna create depth. So it's very easy to hold, okay, hold one puppet closer to the light, the other puppet closer back. Mm -hmm. So the other side, you will feel that they're actually spacing out and they're walking but some of them is not possible, so you have to calculate the other puppet. You have to make the same puppet, smaller size, so you go out, is they are really far away, and there are some of them close. So there's a lot of, uh, again, math involved with the, you know, how to works and also how things actually appear on stage, which is also another uh, challenge. Uh, so let's keep, uh, keep going down, let's keep going down, oh, yeah. These are, again, these are, uh, you know, the, the, in the shadow theater also, sometimes you, you've seen, you can just uh, cut th simple cardboard and it works. But for us, uh, let's keep going, let's keep going down, yeah. For us, it's very important because we travel a lot and also it's packed and also some of these puppets, they go through a lot of stress when they're acting. Mm -hmm. And also because we have a lot of puppets, it has to somehow, uh, uh, there, is, there is actually a hidden choreograph exists that audience, they don't see that how this, for instance, we have 208 scenes, uh, which is translate basically 208 stages that is cut to each other. So these are has to be collected, put together and bring the other one, put it back on the ground in the right place, right time and the, the other actors pull the mask out, sit down, put together, yeah. And we usually perform in the pitch black uh, um, the, uh, box, mm -hmm. but here we just, for the sake of photograph, we turn on the light. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, so as you can see, these are very elaborated and also these are very important that the design comes from the uh, uh, Eastern Mediterranean Sea to the Western of India because this is the air area that is influenced heavily by Persian art from the last thousand years ago. <laughs> okay, so and I, for me it was important that not to include any Western material or any, I'm sorry, any Western design into this mm -hmm. uh, composition. Let's keep going. So it all comes from uh, there. So when you see it, you see something totally uh, Eastern or Iranian or Iranian influence. Because in West, you already seen a lot from the, you know, European influence, you know, the, the dominant, basically, the, uh, culture. Let's keep going down. Yeah, these are, uh, yeah, these are very delicate, um, uh, and uh, it's called from my OCDs and my, <laughs> 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 a lot of, 
<laughs> I recently, actually, I've been here for a long time, but I, 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 I recently learned the, uh, she's told me that I'm, what do you call it? Anal retentive, retent, retentive or something? <laughs> Somebody that's extremely de detail-oriented, which is, I think it comes from my childhood, but because I used to make paints and I make a lot of elaborated paintings. So now, let's keep going down, let's keep going, yes. So, oh, okay, so for instance, the less, left side is, uh, is one of the, uh, uh, yes, eight monsters that we created. And by the way, because you have two sources of light, and one light probably is in the cinematic term would be full shot, and the other uh, cut to the close-up of the character, like you are far away, you see a character, and then cut, you want to see the close-up. So you have to identical, you make two puppets. One is for the full shot, one is for the close-up. Okay, so uh, so these are, uh, again, on the left side, this is actually a kind of those very heavy uh, cardboard that is actually sandwiched together with the uh, color gel, and then again, uh, put together so it became very thick, it's almost unbendable. And then you add the mechanics into it. So let's keep going down, let's see what we have. I wanna see, oh, this is like a reflection of the other puppets. Uh, and also there's a, a lot of, like, because on the set, uh, these two puppets binding the other puppets. So, so it's very challenging actually to how to actually, we're gonna do it on set and live because these are seamless. There is uh, uh, this 83 minutes, 82, two minutes show. It's uh, with 208, you can calculate. Everything has to be uh, precise, right on time. And uh, am I, good timing, yes? Five minutes, good. So let's keep going. I want to see some, there is another folder I have with a lot of detail puppets, like uh, uh, with a lot of laces. Oh, for instance, okay. Uh, on the right you see there is a lot of uh, uh, sequence uh, fabrics. So these are, uh, uh, because at some point there is a character in the, in, the, in the story that she sings and put everybody in to sleep. So I thought it would be nice to have, um, you know, to have some kind of uh, euphoric or uh, reflection of something light. And then also these are mixed with the animation. That's which another uh, topic, because everything that accordance to the animation that we actually created, uh, when we are actually writing the story, we felt that how we're gonna choreograph it. So based on those, uh, let me actually have something for you to show. Uh, unlike you don't do the storyboard, before we started, we do actually uh, 350 frames storyboard. storyboard. Wow. The entire show wow. <laughs> is every piece would be storyboard. There is another folder I sent with a lot of fun uh, pictures. Oh, yes, 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 this is the good one. Let's go to this one, the top. I mean, just like those images. Uh, the first three, I want to just, the one with the, yeah, that one. Yeah, keep going. The next one, next one, the f I think the third one. Not the dancer, I think I just, I've seen the dancers. Yeah, these are the, uh, basically puppet and then sit another device. Uh -huh. So you get the laces here. Mm -hmm. So you create some kind of, uh, it's a nice reflection. Because the, the one that you see sharp is actually reflection. Uh, oh, no, 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 actually opposite. Because it's not <laughs> but depends uh, of the distance of the light, they can make them flu or out of focus and uh, make it uh, out of focus. But uh, let's, uh, let's see what else. Can I see the entire? The there is a lot to talk about. You, let's keep, oh, you, you saw this one. Okay, let's keep going down. Oh, yes, yes, go to the, let's, these are actually fun. Um, let's go to the one on the 123, uh, and then we can keep going down, and I think I can finish that. Yes, let's keep, go yeah, 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 that's one. Yeah, that's from, the, from there. You know, the, 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 the show start with the uh, war scene, which is only 20 seconds, but we have around like a uh, 38, not, to be exact, 30, actually, eight. <laughs> Puppets perform in 20 seconds. So you create this uh, mayhem, and these are, again, these are all with the siren. These are very stressed, uh, put together in the puppet, so it has to be something that doesn't bend and doesn't break, and, uh, and you can throw away on the ground and run for the next one and bring it back. So let's keep going, let's keep going uh, to the, no, yep, go down, go down, please. Yes, let's go, I wanna show some uh, fabrics and uh, also masks. Yeah. Let's keep going down, let's keep going down. Okay, let's go on the left side, uh, the, the bird left. 
Yes, and then we can keep going. Yeah, no, and b bottom one, bottom one, yes, yes. These are the test. Uh, so this is uh, not complete because, uh, oh, we have a push, uh, push. Okay, so uh, see a lot of feathers going on, and inside the feathers is a lot of color gel. So this uh, character, when he comes on stage, he has a, not only silhouette, he has the middle of the silhouette, you have some colors oozing out, which is very uh, pleasing <laughs> to the eyes. And also, again, like design of this bird is actually comes from the, a, a pattern from the Persian rug. <laughs> so based on that, like, he designed the, uh, the headpiece. Uh, so let's keep going to the next one. Uh, Let's keep going to the next one. On the bottom one, yes. Uh, no, 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 no. I just, yeah, that one. Can we go one after another? Can you just click I'm on the sure. next? <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, okay. So this is the same. Oh, the, the other one, we, we have a lot of, uh, some and some scenes that they are going to skies and read the omen. We have a lot of, um, uh, we call it white shadows, which is the shadow is actually is white, which is all a reflection to the mirror. That might be very interesting that because this mirror has to be some way that you can actually fold it and then you reflect it. And then there is actually four people performing to make sure this light comes in the right place because one person is actually holding the color gel and one person holding the flashlight, the other person holding the mirror moving. And there is another guy who comes in the middle of this to create actually that character in the middle of all this uh, scene. So, um, yeah, let's keep going to the next one. Uh, not this one. Uh, I don't know why. This, yeah, these are, again. Maybe it's time for one more. One more? Okay, let's go to see. Oh, yes. Okay, uh, by the way, all these clo out the costumes that you see in these sh um, slides are all were stolen, so we had to rebuild them uh, from scratch. So as you can see, like for instance, also this character is wearing this uh, organza type clothing that we create something on the top would be empty and the bottom would be more heavy and it's uh, because the way that she moves, if it was too much pattern, it would distract the uh, audience. So. Again, these are the fabrics, and also you can see the uh, all the color gels goes to the mask. Like these are like this is like uh, you know both both sides uh, based on the design. You come up with the idea, and also these are all inspired like from Torquemans uh, headdress, uh, things like that. If you go, yeah, to kingorama.com, which is the my uh, website of the Shahnameh, uh, we can talk about it, and then. Once we start, actually, I'm gonna like talk to about talk to you about the stories because for me it was very it's very important to yeah. Anyway, so I think I'm 15 minutes, huh? Yay! Thank you. So I, I read I read about the uh, I read the New York Times article where it talks about the your puppets all being stolen, but at the end it doesn't say if you got them back. No. So yes, we, we got the, we got the, I mean, the entire tr uh, five pallets were stolen. Everything, e everything, like three years of work. The, the, for the Song of the North is three years of constant work. Not even pandemic stopped, so as mm -hmm. we kept going. Uh, yes, they're all gone uh, for four days, and then we found it through a, a lot of adventure and trauma. We found a truck but a lot of stuff was missing or mm. destroyed. Mm. Like some of this mask that you see the bird was destroyed. We had to rebuild it. There is another mask was totally decimated. Mm. The puppets was all on the ground, so we had to repair a lot of them. So a lot of them broken. The props were all gone. The costumes were all gone. All the, uh, the um, uh, uh, mechanicals, like uh, electronics, which is, I thought, oh, that's the easiest part to actually find it you know, call DNH and you find them. But these are many of them, they were the discontinued or no longer in the market, and it was mm. a lot of challenge. Literally, the day before we shipped the stuff to here, we found the final projector. And without the projector, there is no light and there is no shows. It's not like, okay, I'm gonna come with... Literally, a day before we shipped the stuff, we find the final projector in London, secondhand, and then... Yeah, it's a, it was a lot of wow. <laughs> stress to put things together, and, uh, and we did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who's stalling the puppet show? show? <laughs>
You're like, you're like, I'll take the Australian customs, right? I'll yeah. take Australian <laughs> customs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, now we are here. We are back. Yeah. We're right. Oh, we're road. so yes, glad. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I, I want to launch the, the conversation portion. I mean, I know so many of you have burning questions. You have so many things that you want to ask. I want to launch the conversation portion with a, a question for each of you that I think is re related to everybody's work. And so if I'm not directing it to your company, but, um, but you're like, oh, no, I have something to say about that, too, I think that's a nice way to sort of organically show what everyone has in common. And also, if you have questions for each other, I encourage that as well. Let me, let me tell you a little bit about my own interest and why we, when I saw this panel, I was like, Paulette, this is the one I want to moderate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I worked, a, a, a few years ago, I, I edited a book with Claudia Orenstein and John Bell, a uh, uh, Rutledge companion to puppetry and material performance. And in that, I talk about this idea of material performance that so many of you, all of you, are engaging with in some way. And, uh, you know, the... I was inspired by uh, Kathy Foley, who is a Wayang Golak puppeteer based in the US, um, who wrote this wonderful piece in Puppetry International called The Dancer and the Danced, which uh, talks about allowing ourselves to be danced by material instead of feeling like we have to dance it, or we have to control it, or we are in charge. And the way in which allowing yourself to respond to material and to treat material as a collaborator breeds a kind of humility, a different relationship to the world, and it unlocks creative possibilities. And so that's the place from which some of my questions today yeah. are coming. Okay, so uh, Paper Moon, on your, um, on your website, uh, Ria, the, you write that Paper Moon believes that anything can come alive. Every creature, every object, every single thing in the world holds life in it. This is similar to what you all were saying too, um, and I was, and and also that it it allows us to nurture the good things around us and within us. Now I know I know that that was really largely what your presentation was on, but I'm still really interested in hearing you talk about um, what it means to interact m with materials that you assume are both alive and also something to be nurtured. Okay. Well, let's say you open uh, Paper Moon's website, uh, papermoonpuppet.com, oh, and let's see the story. performance part, which is 1,200 degrees. Maybe I can tell a little bit about this one. So this performance is actually, um, I found it's a very interesting journey for us when we talk about material and nurturing and how we kind of like combine those um, performance, this one, and then uh, that one, 1200 degrees. Yeah, so these piece were actually something very special for us because um, this piece, were, it, it is a cinematic performance. Um, it was presented as a film. And maybe you can click all uh, the photos. And uh, this one over here. Uh, the small, the small button to make it large. Yes. This, the small, the small. This one. <laughs> there you are. Oh, here. Okay. Um, mm, interesting. And maybe so I can. Yeah. Oh, anyway, you can you can come back to the to the to the yes. one. There you are. So actually, these all of the puppets that we are using in this part are made uh, out of ceramics and clay. Um, and it was very interesting journey when we found this. Um, when actually, um, we did lots of, like again, like I, I love the idea that Iker also and Jackie told about conversation with materials. Because for us, materials itself, it has its own language. It already has its own meaning. It already has its own dramaturgy. So when we use paper, um, what we found very interesting, a couple of times we use paper for talking about um, sensitive issues because it's, it's really easy to break. It's, so it's those kind of what is, and it's um, one of our show called Translucence, and we use washi paper, and we talk about the, gener um, the, the old craft that passing uh, through generation, and we found that it's, it's very fragile. And we found that this washi paper, it's a good metaphor for that. 
So for 100, uh, 1200 degrees, we actually did, we, we just, in the beginning, we just explore clay and, and, and we uh, brought it to the kiln, that nearby, uh, uh, a ceramic kiln uh, owned by our friends. And then at that time, all of our members just make body parts. We just like, let's try, let's make body parts. It's something that we never did before because usually I started with script and stories and then okay, let's make a puppets like this, you know, like these are the characters, but 1200 degrees are very different. Mm -hmm. So we made body parts and then Anton tried to connect them and we found that of course it's hard to connect c ceramics with ceramics. So he uh, actually put leather, like so we used like d um, um, unused leather. So he, it's again, it's talking about, we have this idea of, you know, using materials that really near to us. Mm -hmm. And then when we decided to kind of try to assemblage that, we found the idea that at that time, I met a community of transgender community in Indonesia. And then we did a couple of workshops with them and we introduced the idea of puppetry as one of a medium for them to tell their stories. For your information in Indonesia, which is largely um, a Muslim uh, people live there. I mean, this, we have a big, large Muslim people, majority live in Indonesia. So become a transgender community in big cities it's totally fine but if you go to it's you know like it's lots of layers talking about transgender in indonesia so we decided like oh my gosh talking about these issues using a fragile um kind of like materials and we, when we talk we discuss about their story their tell us about their stories i found that they've been through this 1200 degrees you know burn in the kiln to make them stronger so the idea of using the ceramics to tell a story of a head that tried to find body parts mm. and it, ca it doesn't want to use what the potter said, it want to find their own. Mm -hmm. It's actually, it's talking about freedom in a way that when you see it, um, so maybe we can see uh, down Paulette. I think we can see a little trailer when you, you, this one, you can just play it and meanwhile I'm talking about it. So. Um, so yeah, so this actually what I found very interesting when we talk about connectivity and conversation with materials and how we nurture and we tell the stories with these materials, I think this one is having that kind of yeah. quite yeah. strong relationship yeah. with that. So this is a potter and then it has a couple of characters that all ceramics, so it's, it's almost impossible to travel with them because oh, yeah. They're like, oh, cannot, cannot. La la, luggage, la la, like, no. <laughs> so, yeah, so this, um, this hat is trying to find their bodies, basically. Oh. So, oh. Yeah. so, yeah, so that's <laughs> lovely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. All right, th this actually segues really nicely there into, I thank go. you. Um, this segues really nicely la into la what la I wanted luggage. to ask la you all oh. this idea of the material um, being an author or as you say in the Spanish language version of your website, um, holding half the copyright to your work. I love that idea. Um, I, I'm curious to know, um, what's, what do you find the balance between um, what you need, I mean, everybody's been talking about sort of, you need to be able to pack the material. It needs to be durable. You need to, you need to um, pass through customs and things like that. But um, that the idea of it being interresponsive and it being a collaborator, um, how do you balance what you need the material to do with what you learn from it? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think in something, <laughs> when you choose a material, you have to accept also the, the consequences, no? <laughs> you know, organi organi organic materials are vulnerable or more yeah. vulnerable than other material, but is it takes part of this dialogue, dialogue mm -hmm. you know, to ha learn how to to um, keep them safe or, you know, and but th but I think this relationship the, uh, ship the to to take care or an, and learn from the material is very interesting and and accept also that's the vulnerability vulnerability of life also mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. um, human are always uh, uh, fighting 
for be, uh, become stronger, uh, strong, uh, stronger, no? And in a part of this discourse of our, our company, it's like accept that we will die. Mm -hmm. Everything. But it will, it will follow in another form also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like puppetry has to be with control, no? Because, but it's interesting that <coughs> we, ha we have to control something, no? Because it will fall. But you have... <coughs> From the beginning, we, we are learning from years ago to learn to be free also, the things. So the, 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 the puppet has always some part that is necessary to be very connect with us, mm -hmm. but there's some, there are all other things that go by themselves. So uh, there, the, there's, the, we, we, walk, we work like, a middle, uh, like mechanical things and organic things and aleatory things. Because life is like a little bit like that. Your heart is pap, 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 mm -hmm. pap, and you decide if you move that, and then your hair is like that. So, <laughs> when, when you have a hair. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so but, but we have to manage uh, the practical thing, like you, your suitcase. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, ah, you, you, can, you can show us our, uh, uh, there's a video if you go down. This one, this one maybe could be could be interesting to, to like freedom to machines and sauvage objects could yeah, be a that's it. It's freedom, ma freedom machines and uh, wild objects. No? Wow. Wow. Like the machines, also we we think about machines like free machines. Like it's not a slave, but collaborators. You, you the manual things that are it's another thing. They let you hear the material mm -hmm. when you tr work mm -hmm. with them. And usually, and then you, you find that there are many things very, very practical. The old ones are much more practical <laughs> than the new ones. The new ones are like, pfft. Uh, you, if you have to, to build, uh, I don't know, we, once we build uh, 80, 80 puppets uh, to, for, a, for a parade, and so we need a laser cut, no? Okay. But we, if we don't need uh, to make uh, 100 of puppets, we don't need that. We, it's much more fun to cut it, you know? Um, and uh, but, but for, for, for keep them to, to travel with, the first, the first step for the walls was to buy in Home Depot the, 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 bo the, 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 yes, the yes. box. So everything will be inside there, only 23 kilos, that's the limit, and everything has to yeah. be there. One yeah. wall, one box. So the, the bigger pieces, yeah, we have to all the, from yeah. the beginning to con, co, to to Not know to that we have to ensemble and disassemble, and th that this idea of ensemble and disassemble, we 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 uh, share it with the public also because we ensemble in front of the public. Twenty three kilos, so that you don't have to pay excess baggage fees. Yeah, exactly, because if you pay extra 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 for eight boxes, that's crazy expensive. Crazy, and it's yeah. it's <laughs> absurd. And that's it. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, it's back to what you just started your conversation. Yeah. Um, you know, when you are watching a movie, sometimes that uh, there is a, for instance, there is a plastic swirling with the wind, and it's mm -hmm. not controlled, mm -hmm. but it's just you're mesmerizing, or the wind goes through the I don't know trees or things happening in natural way. Mm -hmm. Or you're looking at the fire, you never get tired because every time the fire yeah. is creates something new. So for me, because I'm looking, uh, dealing with the 2D space, it's all reflections. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be nice to create material like those fairs and f uh, lace and feathers. So every time you actually perform, it looks different. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like when the bird comes in, ev every night he it's comes different. different yeah form because these are stands differently by nature I, there's no force from me or my uh, crew that okay this has to be stand like this some of them yes it has to be in the certain places and certain distance between the light and those kind of things those are very precise but itself what uh, the material uh, especially the costumes uh, it's uh, each time is different every night they come with this costume that they wait the play it stands different places and different positions and they look different so it actually makes it more um, attractive more mm -hmm. also yeah, it's yeah. A more fresh more it's like, it's like a wind 
in the movie that you're not controlling it. Like, I don't know, you guys seen the Andrei Tarkovsky movie that the wind goes through this field by itself. It's so mesmerizing. The director just put the camera in the right place and then this wind does the rest yeah. of the work. But here is also trying to get to that part that things happening and stage is not fully controlled by you. I, I love that you, you, uh, you anticipate, you gave the answer to the question I was going to ask you in part. I was, I was, um, uh, so the, the idea of, you know, there, there having to be durability and you, you have to, in your show, you, you have to have everything in the right place, I would imagine, backstage. Yes. Everything has to be precise. precise. Everything has to, uh, to work. Everything has to function for the brief period of time that it's on the stage. But yeah. everything also has this organic quality. I was watching with such pleasure mm -hmm. the fur. Right. On the uh, well, the, the collars yes, collar. and 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 the lace <laughs> and the the movement of all the feathers that that come in at that at that one point, um, and I was thinking one of the one of the things I really enjoyed about your piece was this juxtaposition and you use other kinds of juxtaposition too like um, uh, you have a three dimensional body and then you have a flat puppet that deliberately flips. So that everybody gets to see its flatness, yeah. right? Because and a puppet show, otherwise right. it would be the loose. Right. <laughs> and and may, maybe this is maybe this is a this is a question that I'll I'll pose to you, but this is something for everybody to think about: the idea of using juxtaposition as a language, mm -hmm. as a source of audience pleasure, mm. um, and uh, the the way in which exposing, you know, as you do at the beginning mm. and end, and as you do with the, with the design of the little feet, and, and as you do with seeing inside the, the cane, um, exposing how it's made, uh, not trying to hide how it's made as, a, as, as something that we actually really enjoy that incites imagination. Right. Yeah, especially in live, yeah. when you're performing live. You know, like filming is maybe, you can hide things around, but in live, I think, People like to come and see something, yeah. de uh, basically deal with the materials right. too. Especially for your case, because there are people that are seeing you guys. Yeah. They're like, mm -hmm. it's a different, and you're also uh, interacting in a 3D space uh -huh. in the life. Yeah. Here, mm, I have to be very careful because you're dealing with the 2D material. Yeah. It's just yeah. a reflection. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. It's a, and the screen itself is also is another material, the screen that right. you watch. That's right. that oh, yes. That's right. Because uh, any other screen, this is a very expensive material, that uh, screen that has only one step drop of the light from the behind to the front. Mm -hmm. And that's a very... Um, specific material to build that right screen. you can't see the light sources mm -hmm. yeah. you don't see the light screen. sources but you have only one step uh drop from the light from the behind the screen to the in backstage is a bit brighter and the front is not, with like one or one and a half step uh, dim but um but that is also very important otherwise you will see a very muted uh image yeah the luminosity of the also all of we have a lot of flashlights for different parts so we have two main sources of light and a lot of flashlight those are also the luminosity those things are very important that how it should be uh, which part of the show we should use 5,000 luminous, which part of the show you should 100,000, 100,000 yeah. luminous. <laughs> and I, w I was watching, it, it was interesting to hear you talk about um, uh, Larry Reed, because I was thinking, oh, this kind of looks like the light that he uses in his Why Young Lee streak. Yeah. Um, but it's very uh, different. That, 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 uh, you know, but, but the idea of having a pinpoint light that casts a great right. deal of, of luminosity. Yeah, yeah Larry used uh, halogen light, which is the, with the switch, the, the mm, switch from one another. I, uh, I use projectors mm. with the animation mm. and uh, and it makes it more cinematic because we also, uh, we haven't talked about this, we create 208 animated backgrounds mm. that we, these animated backgrounds, okay, we know this part is a traveling shot, this part is zooming, this part is flying, mm. this part is tracking, uh, all of these things and also, uh, so, and then the, the, the Puppeteer, puppeteer has to ref, uh, react with that moment. Like if you are zooming in, you calculate based on the 
script or because this part that the the camera should zoom into the characters because you're emphasizing that part of the story so yeah and then now when you choreograph which took us like 12 weeks of choreographing the whole show which is long and <laughs> time for a uh, for a puppet show to choreograph so that's because of all these uh, details that has to be correspond to the animation uh, so uh, yeah and also this uh, we're, we're talking about this all the side lights that they comes to play mm -hmm. to create more you know at the end of the day you want to tell the story and also entertain and also make sure that the people they don't uh, constantly understand what's going on because honestly for me I watch a lot of puppet show I mean shadow theater show sh sometimes for me it's like after 10 minutes because you detect your mind detect on uh, what's going on behind the screen and sometimes you lose uh, the attention you know, it's all yeah. silhouette 2d mm -hmm. and then you know what's happening and so I try to every like five minutes introduce something totally uh, different so the audience put off balance is oh how they did this mm -hmm. how they so you more engage also <laughs> so how what's the what's the what's the technique they use to do that so make sure the audience sit down for 80 minutes otherwise yeah. 80 minutes is a <laughs> is a so, long yeah, long, long <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that, that gets that gets to you know, sort of a reiteration of my last question that the idea of the audience being drawn in by the idea of how did you do this you know it's 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 different from film uh you know mainstream film where if the special effect doesn't work right then the audience is like that looked fake right um or and it's it's different from live actor theater that's set in living rooms where people talk to each other where often the goal is to um to reproduce life on the stage yeah. one of the things that i found really pleasurable um in all of your work is this this uh, inviting of the of the audience to be curious, yeah, not at exactly. all trying to hide the materials, uh -huh. not trying to hide the materials. Instead, celebrating the materiality of the object, celebrating how the joint is made, celebrating the juxtaposition of different c kinds of handicraft. Um, and uh, so, I'm just interested in any of you uh, just reflecting before we turn it over to the audience on. Um, you know what you saw in each other's work or how that's important in your own work um, this uh, trusting of the audience through the revelation of material and the revelation of the mechanism mm -hmm. yeah you made an interesting point which uh, you sort of articulated in my mind that keep the audience curious to the end you know you're watching a show you of course you engage the story first uh, and then also make them curious okay how how it's been done yeah, yeah you know why it's you know that that's also it's kind of comes from um, your mischievousness your inner child to kind of like a to, to be the tingle or tickle the audience and say oh what's happening here so yeah, yeah. keep them keep going so it's not only stories also uh the, the the technique that you use to keep them engaged yeah do you need us do you need us closer to the microphones Back there, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, we're good. All right. I I I love to to think that in puppets you, it's better to see the zipper of the monster, uh, and uh, and <laughs> you know you you see the zipper of the monster, but <laughs> the monster is still alive. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That yes. is something that yes. me that break up the and then, what happened? You you are looking at a bunch of branches that moves, but they are like. Stone, looking at me that's what happened it's that's like, a, that's like the, the that audience the, the, the audience accept the convention yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they see and they oh in it's an engage i think it's an engage with the artist like more um close like because i am not trying to 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 hide anything mm -hmm. and and i think it also works for the manipulation manipulation is right mm -hmm. so, yes that and I, I love this tri triangle in, in this, in this uh, show, uh, the, the Dancing Beast, this triangle that produces the relation between the puppeteer, the puppet, and the audience, that it is like a, a recycle because, mm. yes, I mean, the, the audience react because of the puppet, but also, also the, re the, the puppeteer receives directly this. 
and when the puppet uh, when the puppeteer is it's hided it is another relation mm -hmm. it's like like this and they the public the the, the people talk to the pub, uh, to the wolf and make like that <laughs> yeah and, uh, and we you are, are talking with are really with the public also I, yeah, it and that it's all the time it's future. And I, uh, we think that it is, it is in different <laughs> level, the engagement. It's in, in a rational, but mostly in a, like an instinct way, animal mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. the, there's an animal way that always w begins to work. It's very interesting. Emotional, rational, and animal. This is like, that's <laughs> very interesting. Yeah, I'm thinking of yesterday um, when I was, I was engaging with one of the wolves, and the puppeteer said, told me to howl and to do a Mexican howl. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, you know, like, then I looked back at the puppet and then I was howling and there were all the children and everything. So I, I could totally see that triangulation. Yeah. And for me, what I found also very interesting is about the audiences never questions who are these puppets outside stage. Mm. Because the stage is their real life. And I think this energy of trusting, for mm. me, I couldn't find it in another f forms of art, honestly. Like when I saw my friend as an actor on stage, oh, I know he is a, you know, he has a brother in outside the stage. This is their personal life, but with puppets, people receive it as it is. Mm -hmm. And I think it's this even you know like three adults manipulating this bottle. We suddenly we definitely receive it as it is. This is. This is a character. So that's what I found very interesting in, in puppetry, that actually it's not just, I mean, the, this triangle, we believe that, I mean, all the puppeteers have this kind of ideas, but the transfer of energy mm -hmm. that happens mm -hmm. on stage to mm -hmm. the audiences through this a very ancient form of puppetry, I mean, oh, yes. of storytelling, you know, like it's very ancient. Yeah. And it happened in many different cultures yeah. with many different ways but it's kind of like it's very universal because in every ancient cultures, we do have that. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's talk about visual, like contemporary visual arts. Oh yeah, it's coming from the West. Um, or theater, basically people are thinking, okay, again, from the West or, but puppetry in every single countries, I mean, in so many different cultures, we do have its own ways. Mm -hmm. And there's never one, only the best way to do it because people, have that language for mm -hmm. thousands of years. So mm -hmm. I, this is what I found very interesting mm -hmm. that puppetry has this inclusivity mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. um, to engage with audiences in many different ways. And we never question which one is the best because each has its own. And that's what I found very liberating as well. Yeah. Instead, we focus on um, collectively coming together to believe in a life. Mm. True. You know? And uh, I, that's to me the thing that's exhilarating mm. about puppetry is that everybody everybody comes into the room to believe and it, it connects to what you're saying about in you know about there being life in everything i mean it it's sort of a re-remembering of the fact that there is life in everything and that that life takes energy and nurturing yeah i, I, I there's a text from a south african Writer that works very, very close to Hans Spring. That, that that she, I, I, I just forget her. Jane nom. Taylor, maybe. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Jane Taylor say that that child uh, grown up with that. We, you have to believe that he will grow up, and you talk to him. It's, it's nonsense. You are talking to someone that doesn't know to talk, but he he will know to talk because you are talking to him. Mm -hmm. So. That is a, a belief. You have to believe, and he has to believe. So that's 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 wonderful. Mm. I think that yeah. she relates that to puppetry and to sacred object and object that is sacred. I don't know. That's that's beautiful. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, I just want to uh, share experience with you uh, because we perform behind a closed uh, screen. So the puppeteers and the actors, they have no re interaction with yeah. the audience. Yeah. And this is actually goes back to the material. So I decided very particularly to make, because no one sees the material or colors or whatever things from outside just to see reflection. But because behind that screen, we are a very 
close like 10 people like a family together we are not interacting with anything you're just ourselves whether we are rehearsing or we are performing we are in that box mm. so we try to actually make everything beautiful for ourselves mm. so we are actually <laughs> wow. looking at each other that's why we spend a lot of time and money and effort to actually these are looks very good mm. it's not like just adding cardboard yeah, together yeah. to make sure this okay it works mm -hmm. the reflection because sometimes people question me say why are you spending so much time and money to create this I say this is because of us because we mm -hmm. want to look at it and we want to enjoy it to so make sure that we have a nice lace nice color mm -hmm. or the puppets are very well done beautifully beautiful uh, so just for us because uh, it's that in 80 minutes that they work together they need to be also uh, have fun too you know mm -hmm. and sometimes we hear audience the reaction which is definitely give them a Energy. little bit boost but sometimes because of the nature of work a lot of people come sit down and, okay this is a Shah Nomad it's a very heavy text this yeah. is, comes from a different culture we have to d react differently <laughs> we have to be very uh, yeah. you know respectful <laughs> yeah. but you know in the story as you saw we crack a lot of jokes mm -hmm. to break down and say okay you're allowed to make noise mm -hmm. and like I remember we perform in Domain, uh, 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 in uh, Ohio, the Des Moines, Des Moines. It was this 3,000 seat theater and they brought students from all vicinity of the place to fill up the, and then at the beginning, the, the lady was talking, I said, make sure you're not making noise, make yeah. sure you are this and that. And then I jump in and said, I said, okay. please <laughs> make a lot of noise we want. <laughs> <laughs> These people behind the screen, they want to hear you because this yeah. gives them a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because some of the performance that people are very quiet, yeah. all of a sudden you feel that maybe there's something <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yeah. Are they still there? <laughs> Actually, uh, I have to share with you, don't tell anybody. But sometimes I go behind uh, with the audience and some of the funny part, they start laughing. So people, they feel somebody has to break it. It's just funny. like one person laugh. The yeah. rest start, okay, is we are allowed to make it <laughs> laugh at this like wow. ancient text. Yeah. So you have to do this kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, puppetry can, can give us permission again to be the, 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 the noisy, interactive, believing people in the theater. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to make sure that we have time for, for, the, oh for the audience. I know you have questions and comments and thoughts that you want to share. Um, we have, uh, uh, Blair has a microphone that he'll carry around. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, when, when, uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, when I see a hand, I'll gesture to you and Blair will bring you a microphone. Thank you for your talk today. This is so awesome. Um, one thing I was curious about yesterday, they were talking about mechanisms and something that came up a lot was sound and the sound that, that puppets make and the sound that you put in your performances to tell the story. So do you have an example you can think of of a time where you chose a material to put into a puppet specifically because of the sound that it made mm -hmm. or maybe some other sensory experience like smell or reflection um, anything like that where it's not immediately about the function of it um, mm -hmm. thank you it's a great question Bambo do you want to show the beetle mm -hmm. so yeah just show <laughs> Um, so of course the real beetle won't, won't sound like that. <laughs> but then this is what we found very interesting because it's not a dog. It's very interesting actually. A bucket of beetles is the first time that we build animal puppets. We usually build human uh, shapes, human puppets. And then every time we build animal, we always intend to make it, it moves like a dog. And we don't know why. Because dog is the closest, you know, or a cat, you know, like, so it moves like a dog, like, no, box not moves like that, right? So it's, it's how to make it have a connection with the audiences, and also, of course, the puppeteers, but also the audiences, that we believe that it's, it's a bug, and how to show the curiosity of a bug that doesn't have an expression, and we're not making it as a cartoon, right? So we're not making it with, with smile or, it, it definitely just looks like a original, like rhinoceros beetle. 
but then so how we we play around with again like the sound of it or how it fly mm. and how it just move to make to show the curiosities of it um so yeah so that's how we actually play around with that and it's interesting when um it made the sound without we intend to make the sound actually basically because it's just come out with the materials of springs and aluminum whatever wires inside and it came up with the sounds and we found that we want to keep it and the other puppets that we had is the ants the rat we didn't we are not bringing it to, uh, now but it has lo uh, six legs and it moves like <coughs> so the sound of it on stage we would love to make it louder because mm. Again, that's another characters that we would love to build and bring to the to the <coughs> audience to make you know another characters of and add layers um, of it because they're not speaking, they're not they're not having that facial expression. Um, and I remember in the every every time the red ants appear because that's the first uh, three dimensional puppets appear on stage, and Yoga performed that manipulated, and as soon as as it looking at the audience with. Um, this marbles eyes it, and everyone is just like laughing at it. It's very interesting to say, hey, why are you laughing on the ass and looking at you? But it's kind of like that kind of, yeah. So that's what we found very interesting. So again, like why we use um, uh, marbles as the materials of the eyes because of the reflections. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and it speaks to people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how we. We, we also, because I, I, in this in this idea of relating uh, puppets with other forms of moving things is instruments, no? Mm -hmm. Instruments. Uh, so there are. Uh, I, I like to, to to think like that. Uh, so the the walls has this 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 uh, seats that mm -hmm. uh, in Mexico there are people that use for mm -hmm. for dances. Yeah. 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 So that. We try to, to, to have that. We have the accordion, but the accordion doesn't work there. <laughs> <laughs> but but the then, works. but they don't. What we make then, I, I, I stay with this idea, and then we make a, a, a donkey, a little donkey, the, the, not him, but the little, and he has a, a pump for bicycle, mm. and, uh, and something that you can ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh, and <laughs> Really it sounds like because donkey. because the the the, the not uh, control uh, sound is the the <laughs> no mm. and the ha ah, is, is, is the is with uh, something no yeah. but mm -hmm. yes it's, it's very interesting mm -hmm. and the, uh, we use also the reflection of the eyes uh, uh, bulb uh, old bulbs yeah. every everybody say it will be it, 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 it light no uh, no, uh, no it's not necessary it, it's only work it reflect. only works reflect. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Reflect. Reflect. reflection reflection and it works very well, yeah. well yes mm -hmm. and then then he, he it's allowed to to, to work yeah. and it's very important the accent no it's, uh, the accent because it's too many materials you have to find something that mm. really contrasts with all yeah. this uh, everything yeah mm -hmm. and to to, to play also mm -hmm. with with uh, with the space, no? Yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, <laughs> we can make any sound behind the no. screen, <laughs> but I have to share with you. If you go back to that the King Orama, I want to show you something else. So go on the That's right tab on the right, and then click on that, and then go to Rustam pop-up book. Yes. Okay. These are the pop-up book I work uh, made with the paper engineer. Uh, and then if you go down, actually, go down, let's see. Oh, here we go. Just run this without the sound, then you can hear it. Uh, this book actually fuses scenes that there is monsters opening up and there is a, oh, let's not sound, let's get the sound out. Just, uh, yeah, 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 thank you. And then just run it. Yeah, so this, this pop-up books, some parts, I like this page, like this page. Mm -hmm. So it stopped it, now anyway, let, let's keep going. So this page is the idea and in the story that they, the, this monster coming with the thunder. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. with the paper engineer, we decided when you open it up, wow. those are actually handmade. Oh so these are actually create some nugget into the uh, paper. So when you open up, it create <laughs> And you close up, <laughs> and so that was very uh, the uh, the conscious uh, effort mm -hmm. effort to actually when you open it up, you create a like a <laughs> something stress uh, related to that appearance of that uh, monster. 
Yeah, these are these are uh, quite a production. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a show. <laughs> yeah. yeah they, we actually sometimes I have another pop up book uh, here. This one is no longer. In, uh, there is a one if you like to see another one. One, one thousand right, people. Yes, yes. <laughs> one go to. Uh, I'm gonna. Zaha I'm actually. Pop-up. I want to. If you don't mind, I want to see more more audience questions because yeah. we only have 15 minutes because left. But um, can you tell folks what website this is so that they can look at it? King Orama. King Kingorama. Kingorama. Yeah. Okay. That th- there is also a page in this one. Yeah, with, with and uh, the, I, I, yeah, I watched some of the pop-up book videos, and I was just fascinated by the fact that um, the, you know there's a dragon, <laughs> and it you know that it s- seems to move across the page the way it's designed to open. It's so right. fascinating. But I want to see uh, who else has questions. You all talked a, a good deal about craft and who you learned from. What do you hope to impart upon others as your craft that you are teaching? To, to what, what do we, we want to give to the mm-hmm. others? Mm-hmm. About how you think about materials, how you make materials, how you make puppets. What do you want to? No, you can go first. Well, we, we, we try to, to give uh, this idea of, this, that's a good question because you, you know, I, 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 I hate to, to think about a workshop, <laughs> puppet workshop like a, like a recipe, to give recipes mm. to everybody, mm. no? But at the same time, the people say, man, uh, uh, share us something, no? <laughs> but so, <laughs> not only, hey, go. So w- we, we find a way to, it's all the time we, we try to, to, to give this idea of open, to, to relate different objects, not only puppets, but machines, but toys, mm-hmm. but instruments, but robots, but I, all these things, sacred objects. And then we pr- uh, here, for instance, we, we propose bamboo. And fortun- fortunately, there's a uh, green bamboo here, so that's wonderful. And everybody go crazy cutting the bamboos and, and the and all the all the all the girls that were with us they they made wonderful uh, birds each one was different because we only Beto and I we we were going through the through the teams the giving uh, suggestions and and case, no, no? Mm-hmm. case and but from uh, 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 beginning with this uh, this a collective project. So we, we, we gave like, like that. I don't know. Uh, for Paper Moon, uh, we would love to share about what around you, like work with what's easy for you to get. Mm. Yeah. I remember at the time, like on 2006, Jogja got hit by a huge earthquake. Um, like 3,000 people pass away. Like it's crazy, it's huge. So lots of people coming from abroad and they brought some ideas of, you know, doing a facilitation of workshop to make for, um, uh, what do you call it, like um, disaster relief or something like that. So plenty of organization come and give some workshops, but they came with the idea that people have to use the same materials like what they have. No, yeah. And for me, it doesn't make sense. No. Yeah. So what Paper Moon does was actually every time we go for a workshop, we always try to find local crafts, materials, and mm. what happened around you, and we start from there. Because for us, that's also part of the story that I, yeah. I would love to hear from people. Like from, from what do you eat? Like what, what kind of, uh, where do you hang out? You know, like those kind of, what kind of, why you use this kind of glass? It doesn't, we don't have the same similar glass in Indonesia, for example, or in another village. So this is what uh, we would love to um, explore when we travel and, and do workshops and making performances. Like, what do you have around you? That, can, and that could speak further about what kind of art are you doing? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, when you asked this question, I was just thinking about myself when I'm learning from others. Uh, and I think it's now it's what people can learn from this, my work. I think it's depend, like we are like a mirror. It depends what your vision is. Mm -hmm. And then what's your vision is, and then you can look at us and feel, oh, this part, this part, I can learn this and then put together yourself. Because at the end of the day, you are making your own art and your own art is a reflection of who you are. 
So uh, mm, I'm right now, I, honestly, I'm not there to teach, any, t teach anybody t what to do and what to learn. It's, it's up to you what you want to learn from the work of art. It's yeah. a very strange <laughs> kind yeah. of question that what we want to teach others. I don't want to teach anybody anything. I just want to inspire and entertain mm -hmm. and uh, show them the different color from a different culture. So in, in the process, if you, wanna, if you have something in mind for your own project, then, then you can sort of get inspiration from any of us or anybody else as the way that we probably got from other people and then they got from other people because it's just like a, a stream of water. It's not like a, you, know, you, you <laughs> swim in the water and you have to get wet. And then you get from influence from other people and you put at the end, but you have to just translate yourself into the screen or stage or paper or whatever you have. So. Yeah, I think that inspiration and that permission, that, that is, you know, like maybe, maybe it's not learning a, a, a specific technique. technique or a skill that you can, or, you know, puppet style or something, but, but the, just the act of giving permission to play and the, the act of, of inspiring others to make their own work, I think, is really meaningful. Um, uh, next question. <laughs> OK, this isn't the best question because I just thought of it when you were talking. But it's interesting to me that a lot of you make um, book art work because I, my background is actually in printmaking and book arts. And it's interesting to see that reflected in this puppet world. So I'm curious if any of you have thoughts on how your interest in puppetry led you to making artist books or vice versa, how making books made you interested in performing with puppets. <laughs> you usually start. You know, I keep thinking, and then you. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, it's an interesting question because, um, uh, uh, you know, I. For me, because I'm working, actually, I'm dealing with the book in general. Because I mean, like, I make this Shahnameh uh, or Epic of the Persian Kings, just briefly. It's the longest poem written by a single poet. Uh, the poet named Ferdowsi, he ten, 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 he collected and put together and versified millennium-old epic tradition of Iranian plateau into 55,000 heroic verses, which result is kept the Persian language alive. Otherwise, we would speak Arabic to this day, but we speak uh, Persian. Also, is a is almost single-handedly is a rope that they connect Iranians or Iranian culture to pre-Muslim. Arab conquest in the 7th century. Mm -hmm. Because to these days, Iranians have problems with this, the, um, the, the culture that's been uh, sort of imposed into them after f almost 1,300 years, <laughs> as you can see in the news. <laughs> so um, so we are, I'm dealing with the, originally I'm dealing with the book, because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm bringing this book for the 21st century audience. This is like what Edith Hamilton did in the, the Greek mythology in the 40s that make the Greek mythology actually popular in the America. So I'm trying to do this with the Persian mythology. So I start with the book and then variation of the different forms uh, to tell stories from the book to make it engaging and also make it more relevant and also make, invite people come to see it because we are as an immigrant and the margin in the margin of the society which is almost impossible to get in the center piece. So we have to sort of scream very loud. So that's why it started making like, OK, we need the book. We need the illustrated book with the shadow theater, with the audiobook production. We need the movies. We need this. Wow. So I'm not, per se, considering myself puppeteer or puppet maker or something. I'm just like, I'll, I'm a cultural activist, but artistically making different mm -hmm. forms mm -hmm. to promote that culture. So. I don't have any titles, you know, you can call me, I'm a film, I make films, but I'm not the filmmaker, I make puppets, but I'm not the puppeteer, I make books, I'm not the pop. So, um, but you know, it's just different thing. But what you just back to your question, the book itself, uh, it's inspired all this body of work. Mm. 
to tell uh, a, a bigger project, something that uh, creates colors into the fabric of American society as my host, because I'm migrated to this place. So I need to give something back. So I thought mm. this book is there's fun, fun stories, and everybody likes fun stories. You know, everything actually remains because of their nice stories that it's mm. remained. Mm. Which we never t actually talked to this panel, but it's mostly we're talking about the materials and the forms. But hopefully, in the future, we talk about actually storytelling, yeah, yeah. which is very important. Yeah. <laughs> Note for next year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Any last remaining questions? Oh, maybe I just would love to oh. add a little bit about the question about books. Because in Paper Moon, um, for the first time, we did a pictorial books out of our performance called Puno Letters to the Sky. This piece was actually our plan to tour next year, 2025 to US. But um, so yeah, follow our Instagram for knowing where we will perform. We don't know yet as well. <laughs> but we actually, at that time, I remember that I started to write the script. And then I have burst of pictures coming out of my head mm. and then I started to make drawings while I'm typing in the same time so I, I I made the script kind of like treatment basically not really script so like scene one what happens scene two, what happened and then I start to cut them and do a collage yeah. on the top of my drawings in each scenes <laughs> and then it end up with oh this could be something else this could be a pictorial book so I decided to just send it to our friends which is the designer and then he started to put it together and we publish it for the first time, that script into a pictorial books. Wow. That what I found very interesting that, of course, the performance is very different with the, the book itself because it grows through the rehearsal. But then I found that audiences keep this story. So it's not coming as a merchandise. Yeah. It came up from that kind of artistic journey of the performance itself. And then, of course, it becomes a merchandise. But then, um, and what we found very interesting about it that people translated to an, a different imagination with the books. Mm -hmm. Because it's, uh, Paper Moon never did a performance out of uh, a written books before. Uh, I usually wrote our own story and then, and then make a performance out of it. So this kind of you know, journey it has a very different one. And with the Bucket of Beatles right now, we actually invite an illustrator. Um, so he, she watched all the performances, watched this, video of the documentation and see translate it into illustration mm -hmm. and we'll make it into pictorial books. Mm -hmm. So again, it's about how this story can be translated mm -hmm. into a different forms. That's what I found very interesting. And it will meet another audiences because performance only happen in that time, right? But the books, people can yeah. can bring it everywhere, anytime. So I think mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, yeah, yeah. it's another life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you were talking already a little bit about this, but I'm super interested, and I think a lot about it and question myself about it, of what is it of puppets that um, let the audience relate emotionally different than with actors? Um, like, what is it that you, like, defend or protect yourself less as an audience member? And then you can, as a puppeteer, as a, as a puppet artist, you can do this complex shows with like, you know, violence topics or feelings um, or even politics in a different way that you can with actors. And yeah, I just would just like to hear your thoughts if you have them about what is it for you that puppetry um, lets the audience engage emo emotionally differently. Yeah, well, uh, in, in Paper Moon, with this, uh, we have this choice of doing um, silent puppetry. So our performances are nonverbal. And I'm not sure I have, well, I can sh say this, but I have this terminology that we have to always do re deeper research about it. But I always say that I'm, I'm doing it with emotional dramaturgy in a way that since the beginning I wrote the story, I always think about what kind of emotion I would love to bring to audiences. Mm. And this came up because I can say in Indonesia, when we watch theater production, people always came up with, oh, the lighting is good. Oh, the actor is amazing. <laughs> oh, the story is like, it's always about the brain. Mm. And it's never come up with a feeling. Mm. 
So that's what I found very interesting when I decided, oh, why when we watch a film, we can cry like babies? Yeah. Why we can be scared? Why we can be angry, but very hard to, to gain it when we watch a theater in Indonesia? I, can, I couldn't say in other places. Yeah. So we decided, okay, let's start with that. Let's start with a piece that can, you know, like calling the emotional experience. And then on 2010, we decided to make this piece called Muatirika. Um, it, in Swahili language, it means victims, and it's about the, the tragedy, a genocide that happened in Indonesia in 1965 to 1969 about the communist people that got raped out of Indonesia. I mean, they, they've been killed and jailed. And so it's still a great history until today. So we decided to make a piece of it. And then what happened on stage? People are, it's not Indonesia. I mean. We definitely built a new world. But then when we traveled a lot with this piece to many different countries, after the performance, people came to us because we always invite audience to come on stage and to interact directly with the puppeteers and the artists. Some mothers say they came up and like, this is definitely what happened in Germany when, when mm. I was born. This is definitely what happened in, in Philippines mm. when the Japanese came. You know, like, and the Japanese say it a different way. So it's kind of like, it happens everywhere. Mm -hmm. Once you, s an emotional, em emotion, it's, it's, it's a language for everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We came from many different cultures, but we, we will feel the same. If we see a kid crying for a help, trying to find their parents, mm -hmm. we will have the same feeling because we, we, we were born in this same world. So I think um, I found that this is with puppetry, um, especially nonverbal with what we found. It's, we are not dictated people because when they see it, as a scene with, with nothing that was spoken, they suddenly translate it into their own world and their own stories. They injected their personal mm. stories on stage. This is what I found very interesting. So since then we found like, this is it. This is maybe the language that we would love to use because it's, it, it's universal, but in a way that we allow people to, to give their stories to the performance on stage. And for us, this is really precious because it's not our own story, it's people's stories. Mm -hmm. Paulette, do we have time to let the, the other folks respond? No, we are. <laughs> we <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what I will say is that uh, folks are up here and I'm sure that you'll mingle and ask questions and we're so delighted that you all came out and thank you so incredibly much to our amazing artists. You're fun.